Welcome back. I am Barbara Wilkes, an MAS Planning Committee member, and I have the honor of introducing our next block of sessions, focusing on the future of our waterfront. New York City is home to 520 miles of shoreline, which includes rivers, estuaries, bays, and oceans. Generations of New Yorkers have made their homes on our shores, from single-family houses to high-rise apartment complexes and everything in between. We are second only to New Orleans in the number of residents living less than four feet above high tide. And like New Orleans and other countless other coastal cities around the world, New York is grappling with the reality that our shoreline may soon be unlivable. How can we manage a retreat process that respects and compensates the communities that may need to move? And how can we best equip inland neighborhoods to absorb this influx of coastal refugees. To kick off this sec se sorry, section of the discussion, please welcome Susanna Drake, principal in D-Land Studio, who will help us imagine the future of our waterfront in New York. Barbara's not out, that was me? Oh. Sorry, I couldn't hear um, Barbara's introduction in the back. So, hi, um, I'm here to talk about a project that I did with a, um, some academics at MIT um, called uh, Bite Coastal Urbanism. All right. I'm pressing. Do I point to you? There we go. Okay. Great, so, so basically the, the, the RPA, we won an RPA competition to look at uh, the coast of, um, of New York and New Jersey. And you can see that, that since the original 1929 RPA plan, ideas about urban design have changed from a concentric uh, rings around a center to corridors. And we were looking at the bite. The bite is actually like an elbow, um, which you can see that um, uh, sort of encompasses the New York Harbor. You guys are gonna have to advance this, it's not going. I'll just point at you. Okay, so, so um, we were looking at, at sort of the, how uh, the ecology of the edge has changed over time. Go next. Um, from one of an ecological exchange to one of economic exchange with a hardening of that edge. Next. And then an exchange where migration actually migrated inland. Um, oh good, thank you. That's better. Um, where exchange migrated inland because of uh, the influence of infrastructure. And some of that happened because of containerized shipping and also because of just the logistics and the mobility of these infrastructure systems. Um, so we're looking at reshaping the, the waterfront. So in recent history, we've seen a reshaping or the highest and best value of the waterfront uh, being related to um, high-end residential use, but there are lots of other opportunities which you can see in these diagrams for consideration of a more ecological approach. Go next. So this is a, a map of, of Sandy and the municipalities that were flooded. Go next. And this is the cost of loss. We had almost $12 billion of loss after Sandy. And um, this is just a map showing the density of those zones in relation to that waterfront uh, flooding. Next. So there's pressure on this line. We created this hardened line, but there needs to be a consideration of, of sort of a broader area of, of impact and a consideration of how we redesign within this zone. Next. So infrastructure systems are supposed to be connected, and you can see that a lot of those infrastructure systems um, are impacted by the, the water or by the flooding. Next. And you can see here what happens when you get the intersection of, interse of infrastructure and this flooding. Next. And the infrastructure systems are no longer connected systems. They become disconnected. Um, looking at this map, this is actually quite important, and it was an epiphany that we had in doing the, the project, that the urban development corridors, that, or their transportation corridors that were developed in the 1930s that were not fully developed, that are on high ground. There are a lot of, the, no, go back. Um, a lot of the development that happened um, post-1930 happened in the area um, between those red lines and the waterfront because of the automobile. Now you can go next. 
So we want to create a new zone, and we have this system, we have this idea that we call receive, protect, and adapt. So we're creating, um, we're strengthening the, um, the upland areas, we're creating new development opportunities, we're creating a protected landscape buffer, and then we have an adapted urbanism and landscape at the waterfront. Next. So you can see there's, there are these wet zones, and you can see these are, these are pretty much ecological areas, but there are different economies that can relate to those ecologies. Let's go next. Um, and then there's a, a center zone, which we call a semi-wet zone. This may have zones that are more of a hybrid occupation. Next. And then in the upland areas, these are currently dry ground, high ground, but they might become wet zones in the future. Next. So, so really, one of the, the principal challenges is to think about how those wet zones and those semi-wet zones can create new economies. So we're thinking about energy and recreation, conservation, and habitation within those zones. Next. And then I'm going to specifically talk about Jamaica Bay for the next five minutes, because that was one of our focus areas. Next. So a lot of the housing in Jamaica Bay was flooded um, in Sandy, as we all know, and it's a, it's a significant problem that we, we have to face, and I think we have to face it with a more proactive approach of, rather than a, a kind of fix it as, it as it is kind of approach. Next. Um, so we came up with this idea of sending and receiving. What we want to do is create um, these uh, incentives to develop this upland area, create jobs, create housing, and create opportunity in those areas that are out of harm's way and receive the development. So what we're doing is actually creating this higher population zone, this higher density in these upland areas. And we're gonna, we assume that there's going to be added population over the next um, 30 to 50 years, so we're accommodating that. Um, we're increasing the density and we're reducing the risk. But you can see that the waterfront is very different. So here's our projected flooding um, for the next 50 years. And you can see that the there are a lot of places that are currently developed that um, really don't, um, don't, or are in, in, in danger, well, let's just say. Next. So what we're projecting or what we're proposing is to make a larger um, uh, eco park out of um, Jamaica Bay to create this new bite city in the upland area to also um, create a, a development zone over here, connecting over to Long Island, and then to um, basically reinforce um, JFK and create an industrial zone be behind it. Next. So really this, this creates, our vision is to create Jamaica Bay and Bite City. And you can see the area is drastically transformed. Next. So part of the, the sort of a critical part of this is to create um, an enhanced transportation and park network that is all interconnected um, with new public uh, transit stations and ferries and upland parks and marshes. Next. And then to create this productive edge, to think about a reconsideration of that hardened edge and a lot of different adapted ecologies. So not only do you have uh, an ecological zone, but you also have new transportation systems that allow you to, say, drive your boat up and uh, park under your building. So you could actually boat from home to work. Next. So the RPA um, is advocating for the expansion of, um, of Kennedy Airport, and so we included that in our, our planning. They added two, or projecting that we need to add a couple more runways. Um, so that whole area would need to be reinforced and um, protected and adapted. Next. Um, and also, we're proposing that the one stop to Kennedy is actually on a boat. It's on a boat. It's on a ferry, right? Right? Like, doesn't it make sense? Right? None of this going through all the bureaus, right? Exactly. It's short. We just need fast boats. Um, so, so, and then there'd be this, this kind of nexus, this water and, and gondola access um, zone that you would pass through, this gateway um, to Kennedy, um, this kind of civic space that would also provide access to some of the recreational opportunities in, um, in the former Rockaways. Next. I'm not being, I'm, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm trying not to, I'm, I don't want to be insensitive, but we have to anticipate that it's going to be a very different landscape. And it, um, so this is Bite City, this um, new anticipatory urban strategy with this new recreational eco zone along the edges and this new upland edge of urbanity. And that is actually, that's it. Thank you. 